A truck or lorry is a motor vehicle designed to transport cargo. Trucks vary greatly in size, power, and configuration. Smaller varieties may be mechanically similar to some automobiles. Commercial trucks can be very large and powerful and may be configured to be mounted with specialized equipment, such as in the case of refuse trucks, fire trucks, concrete mixers, and suction excavators. In American English, a commercial vehicle without a trailer or other articulation is formally a straight truck, while one designed specifically to pull a trailer is not a truck but a tractor. Modern trucks are largely powered by diesel engines, although small to medium-sized trucks with gasoline engines exist in the US, Canada, and Mexico. In the European Union, vehicles with a gross combination mass of up to 3.5 t pounds are known as light commercial vehicles, and those over as large goods vehicles. History Topic. Steam wagons Trucks and cars have a common ancestor, the steam-powered Fardier Nicholas Joseph Cugnot built in 1769. However, steam wagons were not common until the mid-19th century. The roads of the time, built for horse and carriages, limited these vehicles to very short hauls, usually from a factory to the nearest railway station. The first semi-trailer appeared in 1881, towed by a steam tractor manufactured by de Dion Bouton. Steam-powered wagons were sold in France and the United States until the eve of World War I, and 1935 in the United Kingdom, when a change in road tax rules made them uneconomic against the new diesel lorries. <laughs> <laughs> Internal combustion In 1895 Carl Benz designed and built the first truck in history using the internal combustion engine. Later that year some of Benz's trucks were modified to become the first bus by the Netfina, the first motorbus company in history. A year later, in 1896, another internal combustion engine truck was built by Gottlieb Daimler. Other companies, such as Peugeot, Renault and Bussing, also built their own versions. The first truck in the United States was built by Autocar in 1899 and was available with optional 5 or 8 horsepower motors. Trucks of the era mostly used two cylinder engines and had a carrying capacity of 3,300 to 4,400 pounds. In 1904, 700 heavy trucks were built in the United States, 1,000 in 1907, 6,000 in 1910, and 25,000 in 1914. After World War I, several advances were made, pneumatic tires replaced the previously common full rubber versions, electric starters, power brakes, four, six, and eight-cylinder engines, closed cabs, and electric lighting followed. The first modern semi-trailer trucks also appeared. Touring car builders such as Ford and Renault entered the heavy truck market. <laughs> Diesel engines. Although it had been invented in 1897, the diesel engine did not appear in production trucks until Benz introduced it in 1923. The diesel engine was not common in trucks in Europe until the 1930s. In the United States, Autocar introduced diesel engines for heavy applications in the mid-1930s. Demand was high enough that Autocar launched the DC model diesel conventional in 1939. However, it took much longer for diesel engines to be broadly accepted in the U.S. Gasoline engines were still in use on heavy trucks in the 1970s. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> Truck is used in American English and is common in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, Pakistan, and South Africa. While lorry is the equivalent in British English and is the usual term in countries like the United Kingdom, Ireland, Malaysia, Singapore, and India. The word, truck, might come from a back formation of, truckle, meaning, small wheel, or, pulley, from Middle English trocal, in turn from Latin trocli. Another possible source is the Latin trochus, meaning, iron hoop. In turn, both sources emanate from the Greek trochos, trochos meaning, wheel, from trekane, treading to run. The first known usage of truck was in 1611, when it referred to the small strong wheels on ships' cannon carriages. 
In its extended usage it came to refer to carts for carrying heavy loads, a meaning known since 1771. Its expanded application to «motor-powered load carrier» has been in usage since 1930, shortened from «motor truck», which dates back to 1901. Lorry has a more uncertain origin, but probably has its roots in the rail transport industry, where the word is known to have been used in 1838 to refer to a type of truck a goods wagon as in British usage, not a bogey as in the American, specifically a large flat wagon. It probably derives from the verb lurry to pull, tug of uncertain origin. Its expanded meaning, self-propelled vehicle for carrying goods, has been in usage since 1911. Before that, the word, lorry, was used for a sort of big horse-drawn goods wagon. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> International variants. In the United States, Canada, and the Philippines, truck is usually reserved for commercial vehicles larger than normal cars, and includes pickups and other vehicles having an open load bed. In Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, the word truck is mostly reserved for larger vehicles in Australia and New Zealand a pickup truck is usually called a ute short for utility while in South Africa it is called a baki afrikaans small open container in the united kingdom india malaysia singapore ireland and hong kong lorry is used instead of truck but only for the medium and heavy types topic <laughs> types by size Topic: Ultralight. Often produced as variations of golf cars with internal combustion or battery electric drive, these are used typically for off-highway use on estates, golf courses, and parks. While not suitable for highway use, some variations may be licensed as slow-speed vehicles for operation on streets, generally as a body variation of a neighborhood electric vehicle. A few manufacturers produce specialized chassis for this type of vehicle, while Zap Motors markets a version of their Zebra electric tricycle licensable in the U.S. as a motorcycle. Topic. Very light Popular in Europe and Asia, many mini-trucks are factory redesigns of light automobiles, usually with monocoque bodies. Specialized designs with substantial frames such as the Italian Piaggio shown here are based upon Japanese designs in this case by Daihatsu and are popular for use in old town sections of European cities that often have very narrow alleyways. Regardless of name, these small trucks serve a wide range of uses. In Japan, they are regulated under the KEI car laws, which allow vehicle owners a break in taxes for buying a smaller and less powerful vehicle. Currently, the engine is limited to 660cc displacement. These vehicles are used as on road utility vehicles in Japan. These Japanese made mini trucks that were manufactured for on road use are competing with off road ATVs in the United States, and import regulations require that these mini trucks have a 25 miles per hour 40 kilometers per hour speed governor as they are classified as low speed vehicles. These vehicles have found uses in construction, large campuses, government, university, and industrial, agriculture, cattle ranches, amusement parks, and replacements for golf carts. Major mini truck manufacturers and their brands Daihatsu Hijet, Honda Act T, Tata Ace, Mazda Scrum, Mitsubishi Minicab, Subaru Sambar, Suzuki Carry Light Light trucks are car sized in the US no more than 13900 pounds 6.3t and are used by individuals and businesses alike In the EU they may not weigh more than 3.5t 7700 pounds and are allowed to be driven with a driving license for cars Pickup trucks called utes in Australia and New Zealand are common in North America and some regions of Latin America Asia and Africa but not so in Europe where this size of commercial vehicle is most often made as vans Topic. Medium Medium trucks are larger than light but smaller than heavy trucks. 
In the US, they are defined as weighing between 13,000 and 33,000 pounds, 5.9 and 15.0 oh t. For the UK and the EU, the weight is between 3.5 to 7.5 t, 7,700 to 16,500 pounds. Local delivery and public service dump trucks, garbage trucks and fire fighting trucks are normally around this size. Topic: <inaudible> Heavy. Heavy trucks are the largest on-road trucks, class 8. These include vocational applications such as heavy dump trucks, concrete pump trucks and refuse hauling, as well as ubiquitous long-haul 4x2 and 6x4 tractor units. Road damage and wear increase very rapidly with the axle weight. The number of steering axles and the suspension type also influence the amount of the road wear. In many countries with good roads a six-axle truck may have a maximum weight of 44 t 97,000 pounds or more. Off-road Off-road trucks include standard, extra heavy-duty highway legal trucks, typically outfitted with off-road features such as a front driving axle and special tires for applications such as logging and construction, and purpose-built off-road vehicles unconstrained by weight limits, such as the Liebherr T282B mining truck. Maximum sizes by country Australia has complex regulations over weight and length, including axle spacing, type of axle, axle group, rear overhang, kingpin to rear of trailer, drawbar length, ground clearance, as well as height and width laws. These limits are some of the highest in the world. AB double can weigh 62.5 t, pounds, and be 25 meters (82 feet) long. And road trains used in the outback can weigh 172 t, pounds, and be 53.5 meters (176 feet) long. The European Union also has complex regulations. The number and spacing of axles, steering, single or dual tires, and suspension type all affect maximum weights. Length of a truck, of a trailer, from axle to hitch point, kingpin to rear of trailer, and turning radius are all regulated. In additions, there are special rules for carrying containers, and countries can set their own rules for local traffic. The United States federal bridge law deals with the relation between the gross weight of the truck, the number of axles, the weight on and the spacing between the axles that the truck can have on the interstate highway system. Each state determines the maximum permissible vehicle, combination, and axle weight on state and local roads. Uniquely, the state of Michigan has a gross vehicle weight limit of 164,000 pounds kilograms, which is twice the U.S. federal limit. A measure to change the law was defeated in the Michigan Senate in 2019. Design Almost all trucks share a common construction, they are made of a chassis, a cab, an area for placing cargo or equipment, axles, suspension and roadwheels, an engine and a drivetrain. Pneumatic, hydraulic, water, and electrical systems may also be present. Many also tow one or more trailers or semi-trailers. <laughs> cab The cab is an enclosed space where the driver is seated. A sleeper is a compartment attached to or integral with the cab where the driver can rest while not driving, sometimes seen in semi-trailer trucks. There are several possible cab configurations. Cab over engine co or flat nose, where the driver is seated above the front axle and the engine. This design is almost ubiquitous in Europe, where overall truck lengths are strictly regulated, but widely used in the rest of the world as well. They were common in North American heavy-duty trucks, but lost prominence when permitted length was extended in the early 1980s. Nevertheless, this design is still popular in North America among medium and light-duty trucks. To reach the engine, the whole cab tilts forward, earning this design the name of tilt cab. This type of cab is especially suited to the delivery conditions in Europe where many roads follow the layout of much more ancient paths and trackways which require the additional turning capability given by the short wheelbase of the cab over engine type. The co-design was invented by Victor Schreckengost. Conventional 
Cabs are the most common in North America and Australia, and are known in the UK as American cabs, and in the Netherlands as torpedo cabs. The driver is seated behind the engine, as in most passenger cars or pickup trucks. Many new cabs are very streamlined, with a sloped hood and other features to lower drag. Cab beside engine designs also exist, but are rather rare and are mainly used inside shipping yards, or other specialist uses that require the vehicle to carry long loads such as pipes, metal rods, flat iron and other construction materials. This type is often custom made from a regular cab of a truck that gets the upper half of its cab removed on the passenger side and replaced by an extended section of the bed. A further step from this is the side loading forklift that can be described as a specially fabricated vehicle with the same properties as a truck of this type, in addition to the ability to pick up its own load. <laughs> <laughs> Engines and motors Most small trucks such as sport utility vehicles SUVs or pickups, and even light-medium-duty trucks in North America, China, and Russia use gasoline engines, petrol engines but many diesel-engined models are now being produced. Most of the heavier trucks use four-stroke diesel engines with a turbocharger and intercooler. Huge off-highway trucks use locomotive-type engines such as a V12 Detroit diesel two-stroke engine. Diesel engines are becoming the engine of choice for trucks ranging from Class 3 to 8 GVWs. A large proportion of refuse trucks in the United States employ CNG compressed natural gas engines for their low fuel cost and reduced carbon emissions. A significant proportion of North American manufactured trucks use an engine built by the last remaining major independent engine manufacturer Cummins, but most global OEMs such as Volvo Trucks and Daimler AG promote their own captive Engines. In the European Union, all new truck engines must comply with Euro VI emission regulations. As of 2019, several alternative technologies are competing to displace the use of diesel engines in heavy trucks. CNG engines are widely used in the U.S. refuse industry and in concrete mixes, among other short range vocations, but range limitations have prevented their broader uptake in freight hauling applications. Heavy electric trucks and hydrogen-powered trucks are still in the prototype and field testing stages, although media reports indicate that there is substantial interest in them from major freight haulers. Drivetrain Small trucks use the same type of transmissions as almost all cars, having either an automatic transmission or a manual transmission with synchromesh synchronizers. Bigger trucks often use manual transmissions without synchronizers, saving bulk and weight, although synchromesh transmissions are used in larger trucks as well. Transmissions without synchronizers, known as crash boxes, require double clutching for each shift, which can lead to repetitive motion injuries, or a technique known colloquially as floating, a method of changing gears which doesn't use the clutch, except for starts and stops. Due to the physical effort of double clutching, especially with non-power assisted clutches, faster shifts, and less clutch wear. Double clutching allows the driver to control the engine and transmission revolutions to synchronize, so that a smooth shift can be made. For example, when upshifting, the accelerator pedal is released and the clutch pedal is depressed while the gear lever is moved into neutral. The clutch pedal is then released and quickly pushed down again while the gear lever is moved to the next higher gear. Finally, the clutch pedal is released and the accelerator pedal pushed down to obtain required engine speed. Although this is a relatively fast movement, perhaps a second or so while transmission is in neutral, it allows the engine speed to drop and synchronize engine and transmission revolutions relative to the road speed. Downshifting is performed in a similar fashion, except the engine speed is now required to increase while transmission is in neutral just the right amount in order to achieve the synchronization for a smooth, non-collision gear change. Skip changing is also widely used, in principle operation is the same as double clutching, but it requires neutral be held slightly longer than a single gear change. Common North American setups include 9, 10, 13, 15, and 18 speeds. Automatic and semi-automatic transmissions for heavy trucks are becoming more and more common, due to advances both in transmission and engine power. In Europe, 8, 10, 12 and 16 gears are common on larger trucks with manual transmission, while automatic or semi-automatic transmissions would have anything from 5 to 12 gears. Almost all heavy truck transmissions are of the range and split 
Double H shift pattern type, where range change and so-called half gears or splits are error operated and always pre-selected before the main gear selection. Topic <laughs> frame. A truck frame consists of two parallel boxed tubular or C-shaped rails or beams held together by cross members. These frames are referred to as ladder frames due to their resemblance to a ladder if tipped on end. The rails consist of a tall vertical section two if boxed, and two shorter horizontal flanges. The height of the vertical section provides opposition to vertical flex when weight is applied to the top of the frame beam resistance. Though typically flat the whole length on heavy-duty trucks, the rails may sometimes be tapered or arched for clearance around the engine or over the axles. The holes in rails are used either for mounting vehicle components and running wires and hoses, or measuring and adjusting the orientation of the rails at the factory or repair shop. The frame is usually made of steel, but can be made whole or in part of aluminum for a lighter weight. A tow bar may be found attached at one or both ends, but heavy tractors almost always make use of a fifth wheel hitch. Topic: <inaudible> Body types. Refrigerator trucks have insulated panels as walls and a roof and floor, used for transporting fresh and frozen cargo such as ice cream, food, vegetables, and prescription drugs. They are mostly equipped with double wing rear doors, but a side door is sometimes fitted. Box trucks tilts, in the UK have walls and a roof, making an enclosed load space. The rear has doors for unloading, a side door is sometimes fitted, concrete mixers have a rotating drum on an inclined axis, rotating in one direction to mix, and in the other to discharge the concrete down chutes. Because of the weight and power requirements of the drum body and rough construction sites, mixers have to be very heavy duty. Dump trucks, tippers, in the UK transport loose materials such as sand, gravel, or dirt for construction. A typical dump truck has an open box bed, which is hinged at the rear and lifts at the front, allowing the material in the bed to be unloaded, dumped, on the ground behind the truck. Flatbed trucks have an entirely flat, level platform body. This allows for quick and easy loading but has no protection for the load. Hanging or removable sides are sometimes fitted. Semi tractors Artics, in the UK, have a fifth wheel for towing a semi trailer instead of a body. Tank trucks tankers, in the UK, are designed to carry liquids or gases. They usually have a cylindrical tank lying horizontally on the chassis. Many variants exist due to the wide variety of liquids and gases that can be transported. Wreckers. Recovery lorries in the UK are used to recover and or tow disabled vehicles. They are normally equipped with a boom with a cable. Wheel chassis lifts are becoming common on newer trucks. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sales and sales issues. Topic: <laughs> 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 Manufacturers. Topic. Truck market worldwide Topic. Driving In many countries, driving a truck requires a special driving license. The requirements and limitations vary with each different jurisdiction. Topic. Australia. In Australia, a truck driver's license is required for any motor vehicle with a gross vehicle mass GVM exceeding 4.5 t £9, The motor vehicles classes are further expanded as Combination HC, Heavy Combination, a typical prime mover plus semi-trailer combination MC, multi combination, e.g., B doubles, road trains, Ridge DLR, light rigid, a rigid vehicle with a GVM of more than 4.5 t, £9, but not more than 8 t. £17, Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 t, £20,000 GVM. Mr. Medium rigid, a rigid vehicle with two axles and a GVM of more than 8 t, £17,600. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 t 20,000 pounds GVM. Also includes vehicles in Class LR. 
HR, heavy rigid, a rigid vehicle with three or more axles and a GVM of more than 8 t 18,000 pounds. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 t 20,000 pounds GVM. Also includes articulated buses and vehicles in class Mr. Heavy Vehicle Transmission There is also a heavy vehicle transmission condition for a licensed class HC, HR, or MC test passed in a vehicle fitted with an automatic or synchromesh transmission. A driver's license will be restricted to vehicles of that class fitted with a synchromesh or automatic transmission. To have the condition removed, a person needs to pass a practical driving test in a vehicle with non-synchromesh transmission constant mesh or crash box. Topic. Europe Driving licensing has been harmonized throughout the European Union and practically all European non-member states, so that common rules apply within Europe see European driving license. As an overview, to drive a vehicle weighing more than 7.5 t £16, for commercial purposes requires a specialist license the type varies depending on the use of the vehicle and number of seats. For licenses first acquired after 1997, that weight was reduced to 3.5 t £7,700, not including trailers. India There are around 5 million truck drivers in India. South Africa To drive any vehicle with a GVM exceeding 3.5 t £7, a code C1 driver's license is required. Furthermore, if the vehicle exceeds 16 t £35,300, a code C license becomes necessary. To drive any vehicle in South Africa towing a trailer with a GVM more than 7.5 t £16,500, further restrictions apply and the driver must possess a license suitable for the GVM of the total combination as well as an articulated endorsement. This is indicated with the letter E prefixing the license code. In addition, any vehicle designed to carry goods or passengers may only be driven by a driver possessing a public driver's permit, or PRDP, of the applicable type. This is an additional license that is added to the DL card of the operator and subject to annual renewal unlike the five-year renewal period of a normal license. The requirements for obtaining the different classes are below. G. Required for the transport of general goods, requires a criminal record check and a fee on issuing and renewal. P. Required for the transport of paying passengers, requires a more stringent criminal record check on, additionally the driver must be over the age of 21 at time of issue. A G class PRDP will be issued at the same time. D. Required for the transport of dangerous materials, requires all of the same checks as class P. In addition the driver must be over 25 at time of issue. United States In the United States, a commercial driver's license is required to drive any type of commercial vehicle weighing 26,001 pounds or more. The federal government regulates how many hours a driver may be on the clock, how much rest and sleep time is required e.g., 11 hours driving, 14 hours on duty followed by 10 hours off, with a maximum of 70 hours, 8 days or 60 hours, 7 days, 34 hours restart. Violations are often subject to significant penalties. Instruments to track each driver's hours must sometimes be fitted. In 2006, the U.S. trucking industry employed 1.8 million drivers of heavy trucks. There is a shortage of willing trained long distance truck drivers. Part of the reason for this is the economic fallout from deregulation of the trucking industry. Michael H. Belzer, associate professor, in the economics department at Wayne State University and co author of Sweatshops on Wheels Winners and Losers in Trucking Deregulation, argues that low pay, bad working conditions, and unsafe conditions have been a direct result of deregulation. Oxford University Press, 2000. The book cites poor working conditions and an unfair pay system as responsible for high annual employee turnover in the industry. Professor Belzer states low pay, bad working conditions and unsafe conditions have been a direct result of deregulation. This book argues that trucking embodies the dark side of the new economy. 
Conditions are so poor and the pay system so unfair that long-haul companies compete with the fast food industry for workers. Most long-haul carriers experience 100% annual driver turnover. Topic environmental impact Trucks contribute to air, noise, and water pollution similarly to automobiles. Trucks may emit lower air pollution emissions than cars per equivalent vehicle mass, although the absolute level per vehicle distance traveled is higher, and diesel exhaust is especially dangerous for health. EPA measures pollution from trucks. With respect to noise pollution, trucks emit considerably higher sound levels at all speeds compared to typical cars, this contrast is particularly strong with heavy-duty trucks. There are several aspects of truck operations that contribute to the overall sound that is emitted. Continuous sounds are those from tires rolling on the roadway, and the constant hum of their diesel engines at highway speeds. Less frequent noises, but perhaps more noticeable, are things like the repeated sharp-pitched whistle of a turbocharger on acceleration, or the abrupt blare of an exhaust brake retarder when traversing a downgrade. There has been noise regulation put in place to help control where and when the use of engine braking retarders are allowed. Concerns have been raised about the effect of trucking on the environment, particularly as part of the debate on global warming. So many countries are lowering limits on truck CO2 emissions. According to a 1995 U.S. government estimate, the energy cost of carrying one ton of freight a distance of one kilometer averages 337 kilojoules for water, 221 kilojoules for rail, 2,000 kilojoules for trucks, and nearly 13,000 kilojoules for air transport. Many environmental organizations favor laws and incentives to encourage the switch from road to rail, especially in Europe. The European Parliament is moving to ensure that charges on heavy goods vehicles should be based in part on the air and noise pollution they produce and the congestion they cause, according to legislation approved by the Transport Committee. The Eurovignette scheme has been proposed, whereby new charges would be potentially levied against things such as noise and air pollution and also weight related damages from the lorries themselves. A 60 ton tractor and trailer at 80 km per hour needs 168 kilowatts, 41% 68 kilowatts to overcome the rolling resistance, 38% 64 kilowatts for the aerodynamic drag, 9% 15 kilowatts for the auxiliaries, 7% 12 kilowatts for the driveline and tire and 6% 10 kilowatts watts is lost in uphill downhill hysteresis topic <inaudible> <inaudible> operator health and safety a truck cab is a hazard control that protects the truck operator from hazardous airborne pollutants as an enclosure it is an example of an engineering control enclosed operator cabs have been used on agriculture mining and construction vehicles for several decades most modern-day enclosed cabs have heating, ventilation, and air conditioning HVAC systems for primarily maintaining a comfortable temperature and providing breathable air for their occupants. Various levels of filtration can be incorporated into the HVAC system to remove airborne pollutants such as dusts, diesel particulate matter DPM, and other aerosols. Two key elements of an effective environmental enclosure are a good filtration system and an enclosure with good integrity sealed isolation from the outside environment. It is recommended that a filtration system filter out at least 95% or greater of airborne respirable aerosols from the intake airflow, with an additional recirculation filtering component for the inside air. Good enclosure integrity is also needed to achieve positive pressure to prevent wind-driven aerosol penetration into the enclosure, as well as to minimize air leakage around the filtration system. Test methods and mathematical modeling of environmental enclosures are also beneficial for quantifying and optimizing filtration system designs, as well as maintaining optimum protection factor performance for enclosure occupants. <laughs> <laughs> Operations issues Taxes. <laughs> 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 Commercial trucks in the U.S. pay higher road use taxes on a state level than other road vehicles, and are subject to extensive regulation. A few reasons commercial trucks pay higher road use taxes, they are bigger and heavier than most other vehicles, and cause more wear and tear per hour on roadways, and trucks and their drivers are on the road for more hours per day. Rules on use taxes differ among jurisdictions. Damage to pavement 
The life of a pavement is measured by the number of passes of a vehicle axle. It may be evaluated using the load equivalency factor, which states that the damage by the pass of a vehicle axle is proportional to the fourth power of the weight, so a 10-ton axle consumes 10,000 times the life of the pavement as a 1-ton axle. For that reason, loaded trucks cost the same as thousands of cars in pavement costs, and are subject to higher taxes and highway tolls. Topic. Commercial insurance Primary liability insurance coverage protects the truck from damage or injuries to other people as a result of a truck accident. This truck insurance coverage is mandated by U.S. state and federal agencies, and proof of coverage is required to be sent to them. Interstate trucks in the U.S. are required to have a minimum of $75,000 in liability insurance. This includes motor carriers operating vehicles with a gross weight rating in excess of 10,000 pounds which transport non-hazardous materials. All motor carriers operating vehicles transporting materials classified as hazardous, and which have a gross weight rating in excess of 10,000 pounds must have a minimum of $1 million in liability insurance. All motor carriers operating vehicles such as hopper-type cargo vehicles or tankers with a capacity in excess of 3,500 U.S. gal 13,000 L must have a minimum of $5 million in liability insurance. Pricing is dependent on region, driving records, and history of the trucking operation. Motor truck cargo insurance protects the transporter for his responsibility in the event of damaged or lost freight. The policy is purchased with a maximum load limit per vehicle. Cargo insurance coverage limits can range from $10,000 to $100,000 or more. Pricing for this insurance is mainly dependent on the type of cargo being hauled. Topic: Trucking accidents. In 2002 and 2004, there were over 5,000 fatalities related to trucking accidents in the United States. The trucking industry has since made significant efforts in increasing safety regulations. In 2008 the industry had successfully lowered the fatality rate to just over 4,000 deaths. But trucking accidents are still an issue that causes thousands of deaths and injuries each year. Approximately 6,000 trucking accident fatalities occur annually in the United States. Fatalities are not the only issue caused by trucking accidents. Here are some of the environmental issues that arise with trucking accidents 14.4% of trucking accidents cause cargo to spill 6.5% cause open flames following increased pressure from the Times' Cities Fit for Cycling campaign and from other media in spring 2012, warning signs are now displayed on the backs of many HGVs. These signs are directed against a common type of accident which occurs when the large vehicle turns left at a junction. A cyclist trying to pass on the near side can be crushed against the HGV's wheels, especially if the driver cannot see the cyclist. The signs, such as the winning design of the in tandem road safety competition launched in March 2012, advocate extra care when passing a large vehicle on the near side. Topic: <laughs> Truck shows. In the UK, three truck shows are popular, Shropshire Truck Show at Oswestry Showground during May, the UK Truck Show held in June at Santa Pod Raceway, and FIA European Drag Racing Championships from the home of European Drag Racing. The UK Truck Show features drag racing with six-ton trucks from the British Truck Racing Association, plus other diesel-powered entertainment. In Mexico, the ANPACT Autotransport, Truck Show is well known as one of the biggest of the region. 2013 edition features trucker celebrity Lisa Kelly. Truck shows provide operators with an opportunity to win awards for their trucks. See also Notes <laughs> <laughs>